A couple weeks ago I got sick, so I broke out my box of Lego pieces and started playing. Yeah, I really don't mind admitting that at 36 I still play with my Legos. But anyway, while I was playing, I started building a Lego trebuchet. And it's the building of that Lego trebuchet that starts my series that I'm going to call Trebuchet Tuesday. In which I'm going to attempt to build a trebuchet large enough to fling a car. Back in 1992, it was actually the 3rd of February to be more exact, Chris in the morning on Northern Exposure built a large trebuchet and flung a piano. Ever since then, I have wanted a trebuchet. So after 22 years of saying, yeah, I'm going to do it, I've actually started on it. I don't know how often I'm going to upload an episode of Trebuchet Tuesday because this is going to be a spare time project. You might get a video every week or you might only get one a month. This series starts with my small Lego version and then I'm going to start in on a smallish metal version and I'm going to keep getting bigger with my versions of the Trebuchet until I build one that's large enough to fling a car. So as I said, this week's episode is about my Lego version. Not far into the Lego build, I decided to search the internet to see if others had made uh, Lego trebuchets. And the best one I found was done by JK Brickworks. The video is simply called Custom Lego Trebuchet. Now he used matching pieces and built a very realistic looking trebuchet and I had to use the pieces that I have so mine is not near as neat as his but it still functions wonderfully. Also I didn't have the weighted blocks so I built a basket that I fill with coins and my sling goes with the object being flung because that's how I'm going to do it when I get around to flinging a car. Matter of fact I'll probably do it that way for everything I fling. With my Lego version, I fling a Lego tire, and this little trebuchet will fling at about 16 feet. I also changed the release mechanism. I wanted one that I could vary the release point, just like on the real one. The release point needs to vary to change the trajectory. If the release mechanism is straight out, the trajectory of the thing being flung will be more vertical, and if you put more of an angle to it, then it'll release the object later and make more of a horizontal or forward motion to the object being flung. So that's it for episode one. Time will tell if I succeed or fail, but either way I'm bringing you along for the journey. And as Chris in the morning said, it's not the thing you fling, it's the fling itself. <laughs>